Having a curved blade in your hand plane will make creating a flat, square, and straight board a lot easier. Let me explain. Now when most people sharpen the blades in their hand planes, they sharpen them straight across because frankly it's quite easy and it just kind of makes sense. If you want something flat, you need a flat blade. But in the real world, it doesn't work that simply. And there are a lot of advantages to having a slight camber, a slight radius to your hand plane. Now people might think that, hey, you know, doing something that's radical as a 12, 12 inch radius on a hand plane might really scoop it out. But you got to understand, we are laying those blades down. And the more you lay it back, it exponentially gets shallower and shallower and shallower until even though it's got a curved edge, if it's flayed way flat, it's dead straight. Now, obviously, most planes are between 25 and 45 degrees, depending upon if it's a bevel up or bevel down, but that radius will dramatically reduce. So if you're just putting a slight camber on your blade, you might only be getting a thousandth of an inch difference between the two outsides in the middle. But that thousands, a few thousands of an inch can add a lot of flexibility to how you work a hand plane. Now I keep my number five Miller Fall set up with a very slight camber and you can actually see it. It's not that much. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on one side of the blade or the other side of the blade as I sharpen it. So it might be a three foot radius, uh, radius curve to it, but it does add a slight curve to the thing. And you can see that as I run a, my, uh, my uh, setup jig, my setup blank on the side. It doesn't take wood off the sides, but it takes deep side, deep cuts in the middle. I can use that when I'm jointing small pieces and I make boxes. I use my number five as my jointer because if I don't have a perfect 90 degrees right here, I can use proper jointing techniques of putting my thumb on the base and riding my fingers on the side. If it's already at 90 degrees, I just run down the center of the board. If I need to take off a little bit more over here, I can use my finger fence to run on the side a little bit and it'll take a few thousandths of an inch off more here than over here. Same for the other side. I can change that angle and when I'm done and I got a perfect 90 degrees, I actually have a slight recess in the middle of the board. The glue will lay out there and the two sides of the two boards will squeeze in a little bit tighter, giving me an even tighter joint. Now, when I'm smoothing a board, I keep my wooden smoothing plane set up with a slight camber also. Because as you're plane smoothing stuff out, you will find that I have a slightly thicker shaving in the middle. It's a light, slightly denser than on the outside. And that will create the ever so slightly undulations as I'm smoothing it off the top. It creates a sensation that you cannot feel. Whereas if I had a straight blade, if I accidentally took one swipe more on one section than the other, you would feel that rigidness. It's not as smooth. It's not a gradual transition. So this last smoothing cuts, even though technically it's got a wave to it, you won't see that wave. You won't feel that wave. The results will be a lot better. So the next time you're sharpening up your hand plane, consider putting a slight radius on it. See if it changes your results and see how well you like the finished product. Y'all be safe and have fun. So for today's bonus, I want to talk to you about Matt, Bas Matt Vanderlis's Spoken Wood Podcast. He hasn't made them since uh, about 2012, but there are 227 episodes out there. 25 of them are still on iTunes. And what it is, is he's gotten some of the best content creators of the time to read their blog posts. And it's really kind of cool hearing it coming from their own words, or he read them and offered his uh, little interpretations on the intro and exit. Really cool podcast. Seek it out. It's uh, Matt Vanderlis's Spoken Wood Podcast. Trust me, you'll thank me for it. Mm -hmm.